Welcome back, everyone. This is another episode of the Super Mega Cast, or if you just want to not be made fun of, call it the Super Mega Podcast. Let's still be made fun of it, like, yeah. I listen to the Super Mega Podcast. Either way, you're fucked. But we should change it to just Matt and Ryan's podcast. Yeah. That sounds more, you know. We're going to start off with some wonderful fucking news, okay? Yeah. Some great, great, big, great, wonderful, amazing news. Uh huh. This morning, season eight started a fortnight. I booted it up. Mm-hmm. Not only, you know what? I'll tell the real story. I won't. I won't tell the cut down story. My phone rang. My eyes sprung open. It, it was 9 a.m. I looked over at my phone to see that none other than Jackson Tucker was calling me. I quickly <laughs> grabbed my phone, pressed the answer Boop. button, and then went hello. Jackson, with his sweet, sultry voice, went, Fish Sticks is in the shop. <laughs> That's a really good impression of him. Fish Sticks is there. <laughs> and I went, what? And I sprung out of bed, spine erect. <laughs> am, I, am, I doing sound, am I still doing sound effects? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah you're still doing sound effects. That's you running across your house. I... I opened up, I, I, I had to get off the phone immediately. I went to the Fortnite shop. Downloading took forever, it seemed. And all of a sudden, I went right to the item shop as it loaded. And there he was. With a new costume as well included. And so, I used my own money Cha-ching! to purchase a, a Fortnite skin known as Fish Sticks. I got him, baby. You got I'm it. Back. Finally. I'm back in Fortnite, baby. Season 8 pirate theme, motherfuckers. Let's do this. I'm, I, I might have to start playing Fortnite now <laughs> with the fucking pirates. So, I, I mean, let me tell my side of that story because I, I had my own, like, version of the same events. I wake up because my alarm clock goes off and I'm laying in bed. I hear Jackson arise from his slumber in the living room. And, like, every single morning... From the, the moment his eyes shoot open, I hear the TV turn on, and I hear him <laughs> navigating through the PlayStation menu. Not not 30 seconds after he wakes up. I'm not even kidding. It's like the first, before his eyes are even open, he's navigating the PlayStation menu to open up Fortnite. <laughs> I hear the menu music. And he was he was ready. Like He had an alarm set this morning for it because it's, really? it's season eight. Yeah. Did he and, really? And, and I hear him go, <gasps> Harrison, wake up. And Harrison's like, what? He's like, fish sticks. They have fish sticks. You- and Harrison was like, really? And then and then I yelled out. I was like, "You got? They have fish sticks?" And he's like, "Should I call Ryan?" I was like, "Yes, you have to call Ryan." I hear him call you, and I could hear I could hear your excitement from the other room through his phone, like, <laughs> like, like you like you were excited, man. Fish sticks. And then uh, yeah. And then I had a I, lot of people th- at me today on Twitter. It's big news, man. <laughs> Ryan, technically yesterday because this is coming out on Friday, right? Yeah. This this, this took place Thursday morning. February 28th. Dude, I might... I'm sorry, we're going to do another behind the scenes. Y'all already seen the thumbnail, but I might have to have fish sticks in the thumbnail. I might have to put fish sticks in the thumbnail. Let's put the fucking... Replace the Super Megacast logo with the Fortnite Season 8 logo. just getting excited about it. <laughs> like, overwhelmed with excitement. How about... Like, if we could still put boners in thumbnails, which I don't think you could ever do. Yeah, you could... There was a, there was a, there was a point. You could put a boner in it. There's legit videos on YouTube showing you how to, like, put a condom on. Yeah. And the dude straight up, like, jerks off for a second to get hard. And I'm well, like... I mean, you have to. To put a condom on a... You can't put a condom on a soft penis. Oh. Yeah, you can, Ryan. Trust me. Well, you can. It's just a little extra effort. Basically, you open up the condom and you stuff it in and you stuff the balls in because I always put my balls in the condom too like, like Santa's sack of toys yeah and then you slap that thing around once the condom's on and it, it fills up the condom <laughs> what are we a fucking ra- like a fu- like a 50s radio show <laughs> I put my balls in the condom tudum, tudum, tudum. Oh, guys if you don't want STDs you gotta make sure you put your balls in the condom too that's a big campaign I'm launching this summer actually because um, people are unaware that you can still get STDs because your balls are still out of the condom, and they're touching things. Make sure you stuff your balls in the condom. Yep. Very important. That's what Ryan and I always do when we have sex. Not with each That's other. What the, the, you, they're supposed to stretch in front of your penis. That's what blocks the semen from kind of coming out. You know that reservoir at the tip? That's where your balls go. Yeah, exactly. So you're... <laughs> <laughs> the extra part of the condom at the front that, that hangs off. 
That's for your balls. <laughs> you, you squeeze them so and stretch them up to the front so of your penis. it blocks your urethra so semen doesn't come out. Exactly. And the man that invented the condom, John Condom, <laughs> he, he, he designed it that way on purpose, and it works great. Little known fact about John Condom, he had another pseudonym. He went by John Candy. Guys, uh, we have acquired the rights to this story, and we are the first people to ever publicly reveal this information. John Candy is the same John Condom. <laughs> John Candy shit. created condoms. I fucking hate this bit. You don't, you hate, okay. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I'm glad you hate my bits, that's fine. It's fun. not your bit, it was our bit. We birthed it together, and I, I regretted it, and now I don't want it to be my baby anymore. If you had worn a condom, I'd put you it, wouldn't I'm have birthed that I'm bit. i it up for adoption. Okay, put it up for adoption. Any other podcasts want to take this bit? Speaking of other podcasts, uh, it should be out by now. I was on the official podcast with uh, Critical. That, I wasn't making fun of him right there. I was just doing a great impression. So you can go listen to that right now if you want. Fun old time. Um, yeah. We, we all dance and sing? We danced and sung. And that's, sang and had a great. We we square danced for the podcast. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. And uh, I th- I think we're we're gonna try to get him on the podcast soon. He's a sweet sweet little boy, little critical. Little? No, is he's he, is, he's is, he's is actually he, pretty he's, tall. He's older than you, isn't he? Yes, I think I don't know how old he is, but I think he's older. Do you than You already guess how old he is. How old? How uh, don't, old is don't he? put no, me no, on no, the no, spot no, like no, this. No, no, no. How old do you think critical is? Do you know how old he is? No. I would say criti- I only know him from the moist meter. 26. I didn't know that he did the moist meter shit. I'm gonna say he's 26. Is that? I don't know. Should I look that up? How old is critical? Siri. Siri. How old is critical? This is a critical question. Where's my phone? I got. I got. A, I got the. Uh, Holy shit! He's my age. Really? Charlie. Ah shit! I I guessed older. Whoops. It's it's the deep it's the deep did you masculine call him voice. Charlie. No, I didn't call him by anything. Is a YouTube commentator who has... Does he have a Wikipedia page? It's a YouTubeFandom.com. Those are the best. Yep. The the wikis. Um, we don't have a wiki anymore because uh, some trolls did the funny on it, so it got banned, I think. Oh, yeah. Give yourself a round of applause, guys. Very funny. A couple, uh, couple 12-year-olds went and did the goof on yeah. it, so... Well, yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. I mean, I didn't really give a shit about the wiki. It's like, I don't... I don't need a wiki for myself. I'd like a Wikipedia page. That'd be pretty sweet. That's not going to happen. Can we pay someone off to like make Our us? Our brand will have a Wikipedia page before we do. Aaron Hansen has a Wikipedia page. We're not Aaron Hansen. We're not like from the Newgrounds era of that shit. Like he's, he pioneered a bunch of shit. We're pioneering pioneer. shit. He didn't like pioneer. An- that's he not created what I'm animation. I'm saying like he is one of like, at least when I go back and I think of who I watched when I was a kid. Like I watched, I watched a lot of uh, Aaron and Chris's stuff. Yeah, same. I, um, I watched a lot of a uh, lot of uh, Newgrounds animations, and I I loved them. But here's the thing, Ryan. <laughs> Those guys were out there pioneering, and what do we do? We just came in here and we just took a seat for the ride. We didn't pioneer shit. See, the thing is, maybe we're the better ones though. The- they had a talent, and then they decided to do Let's Plays, whereas you and I have no talent, so all we had were Let's Plays. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they Like, we have to, what do we have to do to get Wikipedia pages? Something big. We have to do something of, of, of note, notableness. And doing Let's Plays apparently isn't enough for your own Wikipedia page, so uh, if you guys have ideas for things we can do, then get us our own Wikipedia page. Um, besides the obvious, like, do something horrible. I'm talking about some good shit, guys. I'm not talking about, like, lighting a famous building on fire because that would get me a wikipedia page like if i went and set the, the you'd be verified if, if i set the burbank walmart on fire yeah yeah that would verify me i'm sure they'd be like this guy you know he's, he's going places he's doing shit give him that little blue check mark which i'm surprised okay we haven't talked about this on the podcast and it's old news now but yeah, there was another matt watson that started starting <laughs> adpocalypse 2.0 uh, just my luck yeah. that a dude named Matt Watson comes along and within a, a, a matter of like four days makes the first autofill on Google Matt Watson child exploitation. So thank you very much for that. Um, he did, although a lot of people were pissed, he did point out a problem mm-hmm. that was very serious. Give credit where credit is due, of course. Um, YouTube, as usual, is overstepping what they should be doing probably, but as a company does, it's probably good to like keep advertisers on but hopefully 
they'll everything will calm down. But what about after a bit? What about that shit that said that comments will soon be able to dictate monetization? Like that, even if the video is clear, the comments like if people put bad shit in the comments, that can dictate monetization. See, I'm not worried about it right now. My whole thing is like the precedent. It's it's it um sets yeah absolutely um because the thing is we just have to turn off comments like morals shift through the right morals just shift so right now of course it seems obvious that they wouldn't overstep the boundaries and they just apply it to like stuff that's dealing with pedophiles and uh comments like that but you know when morals shift other things come along with that and so that means that maybe they could rewrite the rules to just change it slightly and then it's like okay now if if you're inciting bullying, then we're gonna turn off comments. But then it's like, what counts as inciting bully, bullying, and why? And like, what if it's a really nice family channel, but it just they get targeted by people like specifically? To because do the that? thing is, if if someone, if a group of people is mad at a channel, couldn't they just like get a little troll army together or bots and then just go comment like, uh, not advertiser safe words on the channel's videos and then the channel gets demonetized or the videos get demonetized. It's like you're letting basically everybody else have control of the creator's monetization. I think the unfortunate thing is that it affects smaller channels a lot more. Mm. Like, cause like you you, you have self-sustainable channels and they can usually ride through this wave, but there's a lot of channels. It's getting harder and harder each year to uh, kind of put your voice out there on YouTube. And that's definitely by design. Yeah. You know, of course Um, there, I think, you know, YouTube is tightening its grip and, it's essentially going for the new age of what cable television is. And so they're kind of, I don't want to say they're the ones pioneering it, but they're at the forefront of it. They don't want these small to medium sized creators anymore, but they can't rely on for like not saying something bad. They want trusted content that they know middle America and everyone in the world will eat up. Like a TV station is not going to put on a show that's going to turn their audience off. Right. And so the audience, the audience speaks. They're right? like, oh, we can trust Jimmy Fallon's funny. We'll yeah. put uh, him on and then boom. So we don't need some small creator trying to make a living with 25,000 subs that could accidentally say something not advertiser friendly or purposely say something not advertiser friendly and then uh, get us in a whole world of trouble. You know? Of course. But um, we're working hard. We're trying to. Uh, but it hasn't affected us yet. Ho- yeah. Not yet. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping it, it won't. I've seen that it's affected some people. Hopefully, it's just a time, like a time thing. It gets fixed quickly. If not, fuck. Yeah, I don't trust YouTube as a company to fix problems. Um, and that's I, I think that's we, working. We, that's working with like, not really for them, but kind of like under them for for ever since you start a channel and start to monetize it. Yeah. So. Um, I think why I actually we talked about this a little bit on when I was on the official podcast, but this goes to show shit like this is don't. Put, if you're a YouTuber, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Try to branch out to other things like Patreon or live streaming or make your own website or Twitter. Or just like other places where YouTube is not your only financial source if you're a content creator because it's channel, not cause steady. It's possible for a channel just to die overnight if it's at the will of YouTube. Yeah. So it's so. like if that's your only source, it's like it's smart if you're building – an audience, and I know there's a lot of like smaller channels that listen to this podcast. So that is my advice to you guys: is to uh, branch out because YouTube can't be trusted as a reliable source of income. Because who knows? A year from now, none of us might be making money. Who YouTube knows? is the best megaphone one can have at this particular point in time. Yeah. So uh, I like Patreon, and we're. Maybe working on that for something soon. Yes, yes, we are. We're uh, the only thing I'll say is that we are gathering content together to perhaps have as a, a Patreon thingy. thing. Should know? we should we talk about the big thing we're about to do? Are you t- going to go into a special place? Going to a very special place, guys. Yeah, we're going to Turkmenistan. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to Japan. Yeah, uh, next week, a uh, week from today, at the time of this podcast, we're going to be flying out with uh, Jackson Harrison. We're going to Tokyo and Kyoto for about a little over a week to film videos. The whole purpose of this trip is to go and shoot a bunch of videos for Super Mega. Or one big video, we're not sure yet. We have a bunch of ideas. We're just going to go film a bunch. Have and fun. Make some cool videos for the channel in Japan. Because that's something a lot of you guys have wanted. And we were like, fuck, that sounds like a really fun idea. So we've been saving up for merch sales and shit and touring. And we're going to Japan. So, woo! Yeah, and if and if that goes well and, uh, and the videos do well, of course, and stuff like that, it all depends. Because, you know, the... the 
the money comes with whether, whether the people enjoy the content, right? So if, if you if, fuckers aren't watching, no, no. If the content's enjoyed, then perhaps we can like. I'd love to like do other series. I love like that. other countries. Like Super There's Mega like goes to Turkmenistan. I'd love to just uh, take trips. Like I'm legit. Where I just want to go is like Super Mega goes to South Dakota, and it's just like the most miserable time. It's like, funny because I was just thinking North Dakota, and you just said <laughs> South Dakota. We should uh, go to both. And then we should, we should we should do um, Super Mega's North Dakota versus South Dakota debate where we spend like two nights in each state. We should make but just under the most. No, no, no. You spent like I, I set up I set up a vacation, quote unquote, for you in North Dakota. And you set up one for me in South Dakota. And then we both and have to film Jackson, our own experiences. Each, each, each like Jackson and Harrison, like Jackson will be with you. Harrison will be with me. And they'll film like. That's not fair. Because if Harrison goes with you, he's going to find some amazing bars, some great restaurants. That's like <laughs> okay, his, fine, his then talent. Get, then I'll get Jackson. And you can have Harrison. I feel like it's harder to find fun things to do in North Dakota than South Dakota. Okay. I, well, they both sound miserable. We're going to see which one's better. But. I'm sure that they have Sounds great awful. towns, but honestly, like North Carolina versus South Carolina. South Carolina wins, by the way. Yeah, not so. moral. Suck it, but but by their f- we have Charleston. Yeah. That's a cool city. Well, they have the Outer Banks, though. The Outer Banks are really fucking cool. Yeah, but Charleston's epic. It is, and we have Myrtle Beach, which is like trashy, <laughs> nice. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say Myrtle Beach is something to brag about. It's fun, though. It is. It's it's gross it's, it's real trashy. gross. It's real trashy. We're going to move the business like there. Like, Myrtle Beach is, like, our own Florida. Yeah, it's like if you took all of Florida and put it in one city in South Carolina. <laughs> it's Myrtle Beach. What yep. is up with Florida, dude? Florida is, like, uh, which we'll, we'll actually be there in April in Orlando to do a, a live show. Uh, so, can't wait to see you Floridians. But what is up with Florida, man? Like, Florida is quite... There's no other state like it, you know? How whenever you... See something in the uh, news if it's, it's weird. Florida it's man, like yeah, Florida man. Or honestly, the thing is, they get all this weird shit. But like South Carolina gets all the racist, like fucking disgusting, awful shit. Like Florida gets funny shit. We get like church shooting, uh, the cop that shot an unarmed black man in on camera. Yeah, yep. Uh, we get, we get all that good shit. Uh, while Florida's just like, man trips over raccoon and breaks spine. Florida man. It's like. <laughs> man cannibalizes other man, Florida. Oh yeah, I forgot that happened in Florida. That's pretty bad too. That's pretty fucked up. Was that? that I think was, everything's that, pretty fucked up. I'm not gonna say which one's more fucked up. Of course, it's the South. It's all around the same like, level. Like, that's all fucked up. Did, was that? That's the zombie thing that happened in Miami, right? I don't know. We said it last time, and people were like, "No." Well, that, well, that, wait, wait, it was like the no, no. They said no to the bath salts. It wasn't bath salts, apparently, and it just he was just crazy. I guess that I don't shit's know. scary, dude. Well, th- that's the thing. My like one of like the fears is because you know there's there's people out there that like with famous people. It's like oh, you put a chip in my head, and then they'll like kill you. Oh, or like something. schizophrenia stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like there's like a lot of um, celebrities with stories of stalkers and stuff. Like, like schizophrenic stalkers. Where the definitely. stalker was like, no, the celebrity is going to like kill me. Oh yeah, like um, like they're after me. Like that guy that broke into Post Malone's house because he said that Post Malone was like stalking him. Yeah, yeah. That's freaky, man. Like, you ever read about could, gang stalking? No. It's so gang stalking is like I'm pretty sure it's like a, it's it's I'm pretty sure it's schizophrenia. I think it's like a form of schizophrenia where you believe that there is a large group of people all working together as a conspiracy to stalk you. So like you see a car drive by your house and you think that like that's them they're stalking me and or like the, and then they send like messages through the TV to you. They like every like you walk past so, like, someone and they'll give you a look. This elaborate kind of like. It's Truman all, Show type thing where yeah. everyone's stalking you, yeah. The Truman Show could just be about a dude with schizophrenia, you know? True. Men. Men? You said true and I said men. Truman. Oh, got it. Got, got it? it. Got it. Yeah. Schizophrenia is a is a very, uh, I think, very, like, kind of scary disorder just because it's, like, the one disorder that kind of just, like, really messes with your brain. It was almost like... It kind of like reminds me of when I was um when I was just waiting day after day for fish sticks to come out in Fortnite and he would never show up in the shop and I thought I, I honestly thought Epic Games was conspiring against me. I thought I thought you had sent in letters to them telling them not to put it up because you thought it was a funny bit for the channel. I really cr- crafted my own universe in which 
Uh, my worst fears were brought to the light, but only through my own thinking and doing. And then all of a sudden this morning, a, a, a bright light appeared and it was fish sticks. And I realized that my worrying was for nothing because eventually the light shines down. Oh, hello. Heaven let your light shine down. down. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, I should get a choir to start the. Heaven like, let your <laughs> light shine down. That would be amazing. But that song no. kicks ass, dude. Yeah. That, that's such a good song. I had that in my Spotify plays for a while, and I just fucking. I just put it on in my room sometimes, just like. I mean, the part was like. It's so good, man. Fucking, yeah. you can't beat that shit. God damn it, man. <laughs> Fuck. Let's do an ad read. All right. Yo, Matt. Yeah? You know you know what's better than generic off-the-rack suits? What, buddy? Made-to-measure suits that, that fit better compared to those other st stupid suits. They're so stupid! But with Indochino, you can get yourself a real nice fitting suit that will literally fit however you freaking want it to. Everyone looks better in a fitted suit. And you'll feel more confident, too, especially when you go to friends' weddings, because you're growing older and life is going by faster. Ryan, let me tell you something you might not have known. Yeah. Indochino is the world's most exciting, made-to-measure menswear company. They make suits and shirts to your exact measurements for an unparalleled fit and comfort. Guys love the wide selection of high-quality fabrics and colors to choose from. Guys sure do, brother. Not to mention the option to personalize the details, including your lapel, <gasps> your lining, Ooh. pockets, <gasps> buttons, <gasps> and writing your very own monogram. Wait till I tell my dad and all of his friends. Here's how it works, Ryan. You visit a stylist at one of Indochino showrooms and have them take a look at your measurements personally, or you can measure them at home yourself and shop online at Indochino.com. Oh man, that sounds cool. Yep, you can even choose your fabric inside and out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you talking about the outside, but also the inside? I'm talking about the inside and the outside. Whatever uh -huh. colors you want, whatever fabrics, you can choose your design customizations. Submit your measurements with your choices and relax while your suit gets professionally tailored and mailed to you in just a couple of weeks. This week, our listeners can get any premium Indochino suit for just $359. Oh! Frick! At Indochino.com when entering Super Mega at checkout. That's 50% off the regular price for a made-to-measure premium suit, plus the shipping is free. free. What is that, Matt? That's Indochino.com. Use the promo code SUPERMEGA to get 50% off any premium suit for just $359 in free shipping. That's a good price for a nice suit, especially one that's perfectly tailored to your body. Wow, buddy. Once you go custom, you don't go back. Huh? 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 And we're back. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Super Mega Cast. We're just uh, chilling out, hanging out. Yep. You know, beating uh -huh. off, doing yep. the podcast. Yep. All those things? A mm, few of them. N nope, you're doing all of them. I'm sitting here not beating off. Yes, you are. I was. Ryan McGee has not, cock in I'm hand. not anymore. Well, you're not making the stroke measures, the, the, the motions. Yeah, but... as soon as you called me out, I stopped. Okay, well, you're still... Have it in your hand, like, and that, that grasp is still beating off in my book. Fine, I'll just slap it from side to side then. How do you like that? Huh? Let me, let me get a little slap in there. Ow, that's too hard. Stop. Stop. How do you like it when I slap your fucking balls, Stop, huh? dude. That hurts. Thus concludes the bit about slapping each other's testicles. Ha ha. Ha ha. 24 years old here. Hope you guys enjoyed that bit. We uh, scripted that one out late last night. Uh, I, I called Ryan. I was like, baby, listen up. I got a good one that's going to make the audience laugh on tomorrow's podcast. So it's, it's a bit where we're slapping each other's dicks. <laughs> and then I said, what if what if you slap me a little too hard on the on the dick? And then you went, okay. That's wonderful. And then you and then you overreact and get really mad. And then you slap my dick. Yep. That was your idea, the whole coming in and slapping my dick yeah, thing. And then we were gonna end it with like I was gonna come in with a deep voice and kind of make fun of it. And then you were going to over explain and you were gonna when you over explained it, you were gonna say something along the lines of Hope you guys enjoyed that bit. We uh scripted that one out late last night. Uh, I, I called Ryan, I was like, baby, listen up. 
I got a good one that's going to make the audience laugh on tomorrow's podcast. Okay, so it's a bit where we're slapping each other's dicks. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the bit along those lines. So, um, yeah. Okay. You been uh, listening to any good music lately, Ryan? Um, uh, I've actually hit like a roadblock in terms of like I found all of my February playlist music like in the first like week of February and I haven't really found any other songs recently to add. Yeah, I do that sometimes because I make, you know, we both make our month playlists. Um, and uh, basically, I'll go through periods where I find like a shit ton of music in a course of three days. And then I'll have like a dry spell with music where I won't find anything new or listen to that much new stuff for like several weeks. Because like I'm kind of the, the way I work is like I'll have probably two or three songs that I'm really into on rotation for like a week or two, mm-hmm. and then I'll kind of phase them out and phase in some new songs I really like. But I usually go in like sets of two, three, four, five songs at a time. And then when I drive, I'll just kind of cycle through those few. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll get sick of them. But I'll have them on my playlist so I can look back at them in the future. I like because it's like going back to a different time. It's yeah, like, ah, it's like that's how I, I how did I, I feel in June 2018. Exactly. Oh, here's these all, all these songs. That's how I felt. And music's a good way of bringing up memories. I think it's the best way for me. Like music and smells. Yeah. Those are like the two things for me. Well, I think for most people, right? Is it's like study? the strongest emotionally impactive senses for me. They're like music and smells. Like if you combine a nostalgic smell with a nostalgic song for me, that's like, that's it. You have, you have tickled me into the most beautiful oblivion. What if like, what if at, like, I die in a horrible accident and one day you're in your house and 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 you look out like you're like we're past your picket fence and my little white picket fence yeah and all your cats are out in your yard okay <laughs> and, now uh, you're world building and uh you see this man in black gym shorts with a black t-shirt walk by and all of a sudden you smell this eggy like sulfury smell would you cry in that moment because you it because it would remind you of, say, a, a very dear friend of whom you built a connection with. Very deeply. maybe if he was walking and he was whistling a classic Ryan McGee song. Like he, a, he whistles the super mega do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Such a hit song. Everyone everyone whistles it when they walk down the streets. Like <laughs> that's actually made by Holder, uh, who he made like he made the beat for. Uh, Filthy Frank's dump or Pink Guy's Dumpling song. He made the H three H three theme song. Like that's the same guy that made the. Dun, 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 dun. Remember, I hit him up when we started. And I was like, "You make our theme song." We actually have a new in card starting soon that has a nice little uh, song produced by Harrison, the producer, not Harrison Tucker, the one that made a uh, Comfort Cruise. You know. I'm excited to hear what what comes out of. Uh that brain that sweet little sweet little boy brain of his he's eight by the way i don't know if i told you that what he's eight the guy making the end card eight years old (laughs) no he's not yes he is he's he's just amazing at making music no he's not he's eight years old he's eight years old yes he's verified on twitter and he's eight years old what yeah no he's not harrison the music like artist look it up I don't want to look it up because then you're like, oh, no, he's not fucking eight years old, Ryan. No, I'm fully Dude, looking I'm up. I'm thinking of where I was look when it I was up. eight years old. Well, he's more successful than where you of were at eight years that, old. But like, I'm just like, how does an eight year old. Look it like, up, dude. Is he just a fucking savant? Yes. Is he a genius? He may, he's amazing at, at making music. Harrison Music. What? Is that yeah. just what I look up? Yeah. I think, I think his Twitter handle is produced by Harrison, like prod by Harrison. Look him up. He's 58 years old? No. George Harrison? Not that George Harrison's from the Beatles, Ryan. <laughs> Not the same one. Where we got George Harrison to make our in card song, guys. <laughs> what he, if we He did? took some time off from the Beatles. From being dead. George, wait, is George Harrison dead? Yeah. Really? Mm hmm. No, he's not. Stop fucking with me, dude. Why would you gaslight me about something as serious as George Harrison being alive? He, he died in 2001. What? No, he, fuck off, Ryan. Siri, is George Harrison alive? Come on, you dumb bitch. Answer the question. He lived for 58 lovely years. I see the look in your eyes. You're fucking with me. George Harrison's not dead. My sweet. Age at death, 58 years. Let me see. George Harrison. 
Oh, God damn it, he did die. I didn't know George Harrison was dead. So what, what Beatles are still alive then? We got Ringo and Paul McCartney and that's it? Yeah, John Lennon died. John Lennon was only 40 when he died? Yeah, dude. Jesus. Ryan, I told you to keep looking up Harrison. Holy shit. What? Jimi Hendrix looks old. Jimi Hendrix was only 27 when he died. Yeah, part of the 27 Club. Fuck. It's Jimi Hendrix. Club. Yeah, t- uh, it's like a group of... Uh, Artists who have died at 27? Yeah. And they all... There's like a weird thing where they all had like Is white Kurt lighters. Cobain one of them? Yes. Of they, course they, he is. They all had like white lighters of or something like that. Whoa, it must mean something. Kurt Cobain, let me ask you something. Oh, Lord. Do you think Kurt Cobain killed himself, or do you think there was some foul play and someone else killed him? I don't know the story behind that. He drank a root beer, did some heroin, and then blew his brains out. With a shotgun. With a shotgun. But people are like, there's no way after shooting up with heroin he'd be able to, you know, maneuver a shotgun and shit. And Courtney Love might have done it. Shot him in the head? Yeah. I I don't know the story either, but uh, a lot of people, there's like a lot of conspiracy theories that Kurt Cobain didn't actually kill himself and like he was murdered um, by Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. Sorry, I'm sorry. That's not a true theory. I don't want to spread that out. Produced by Harrison? Yeah. Prod by Harrison. Okay. Prod. That's the guy making the Incart song, the eight year old, amazing, talented musician. I'm about to prove you wrong. I don't... Where does it show his age? Just look at a picture of him. What do you mean a picture Look at his profile picture, dude. His profile picture's of a cartoon. Let me see. What Twitter are you looking at, Ryan? This is going on for way too long. I'm looking at this. Let let me... (sighs) Do I have to show you a picture of him? Don't go to Google Images and look up eight-year-old. Here he is. <laughs> of course he's not fucking eight years old, Ryan. Well, that's how the fuck is he gonna produce music and be verified at eight years old? Are you kidding me? That would be the way to be verified is to make music at the age of eight. I, how, you know how many eight year olds make music and aren't verified because they make shit music because they're eight years old. There's some fucking savants. There's some kids who can do fucking better math than you or I, and they're five years old. Yes, yeah, so, but they aren't verified on Twitter. You're not gonna get verified being able to do fucking math problems. If you make good music that people love at eight years old, you're gonna be verified. Says who? <laughs> Says the world. Says Why am I not Jimmy verified? Fallon. I have two hundred and twenty thousand Twitter music followers. Like an eight-year-old savant. There's other guys. There's other Matt Watsons. That's confusing. There was just another YouTube Matt Watson that you everyone mean, confused as me. Why am I not verified after you that? You know damn well why you're not verified. Why am I not verified? Because we had a dark period where we made fun of certain people and it put us on the blacklist. Fuck. Yeah. They looked at my edgy tweets and they're like, oh, never I slimed verified. my way through for some reason. I'm never getting verified. If if they didn't verify me in the midst of the other YouTube Matt Watson controversy, they're not verifying me ever. Because <laughs> that was the perfect opportunity. What, right? Yeah. Like that was the perfect excuse to verify well, that me. We do tours. You know, we do comedy shows at, at at comedy festivals. So technically you could say I'm a comedian. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a real. Don't, but we're by not definition. comedians performing. People don't get that confused. When you come see a show, it's uh, it's not it's not like you're going to see a comedian, guys. You're you're seeing people on YouTube. You're seeing this on stage. Yeah. That's you're a, literally seeing the unorganized mess of our channel translated on stage. That's um, about it. Yeah. And we just get drunk and, and people seem to like it. Yeah. So if you would like to buy a ticket, the ticket link is in the description for our East Coast tours. We're doing two of them. Go boop, 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 boop. That's the sound of you putting in your mom's credit card info. <laughs> yep. It's also, they're all 18 plus, uh, except for two of them, which are 21 plus. It says it on our website, though. Um, but also, we've been getting some emails about ticket stuff. We don't handle any of that, um, so we are unable to answer those questions, unfortunately. So, if you have questions about... T- <laughs> Ryan just showed me a video of a horse falling down. It's so funny! It's not, it, dude, that horse, is, that had to hurt. No, dude, look at it. He walks it off <laughs> Afterwards. Yeah, he walks it off. He's he just fine. Goes, what? He's fine. Yeah. Um, if you have questions about ticketing stuff, like the VIP tickets or whatever, uh, contact the venue um, because we don't handle any of that ourselves. That's all the touring company and the venues. So we unfortunately can't answer those questions. Um, but our live show is fun. Uh, we sit down. We do like podcast. We do this. We just sit and talk for a while. Um, we take several segments from like the channel and like for this for the last tour we did. Drunk drawing, and um, we did an eating segment at, on each tour where we would like, like for instance, Ryan would go out 
the day we're in the city. So like we're we were in Seattle. Ryan went out to a supermarket across the street, got some really gross shit, and uh, filmed himself making it in the green room. Made you a big uh, bowl of chowder, a cup, a cup of chowder, and then a you mug of chowder. Yes, a mug of chowder, and then you premiered it on stage. The video of you making it. Moments before we went on stage, and uh, I had headphones on, so I, di- I didn't know what you were putting in it. And then I got to eat it live on stage, like one of our gross cooking videos. Yeah. And we also just have a good time. We do a Q&A, talk, you can get some exclusive merch. You poisoned me on the last show. I did. <laughs> yeah. That's technically poisoning someone. Mm. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Define poisoning. If Let me put it this way. If I put an edible in something you ate and gave it to you without you knowing... That's different, though, because that's a long Bill term Cosby fucking... did that to fucking women. Yeah, Ryan, you can't compare me putting dip on a salad to Bill Cosby <laughs> drugging and raping women. Well, I just... Those did. are not this... Yeah, but they're, no, they're completely different ballpark. The, they're, they're of the same ill. Bill Cosby roofing women is not the same as me putting chewing tobacco on a salad and giving you a heads up. Hey, there's I something gross on it. I taking advantage of, Matt. I, I was trying to... I didn't I was, do anything I goofy. I nicotine. And here my I took a bite of it too, and it was gross as fuck. It was winter yeah, green. Yeah, but who ate the whole fucking like? I gave you. Of I dip. gave you. I gave you a heads up before we went you on didn't stage. Tell me what it was. You said don't swallow it. I'm I like, said oh, okay. don't go for the sinner. Listen, and I will say I it's gross. You were being nice. No, I said legitimately. Throw up I said stage. don't go for the sinner. And then you went for the sinner. You put the whole wad of dip in your mouth. You chew it, and I look at you, and you don't have a good look on your face. And I go, Ryan. I'm being serious. Don't swallow that. I told you not to go for the sin, and you did. And you thought I was just going for a bit, and then you swallowed it. Not and just I was going like, for a bit. I thought you were just like, oh, it's too gross. And I was like, you know what? I don't. No, I legitimately shit. mean like, don't I, swallow it because it's chewing ever tobacco. Swallow stuff. So I'm gonna swallow it right here, right now, just to prove like I I can be up there with the big boys. I can Matt swallows everything I feed him. Giggity. Ha 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 ha. And then all of a sudden, Ryan's like, I feel weird, man. I feel really weird. No, you were like, so do you feel weird? I was like, what? It was like this fucking Bond villain moment where I was like, what? And you're like, do you feel uh, buzzed? And I was like, did you put cigarettes in the salad? He's like, no. I'm like, did Unfortunately you pour, did, worse. Did you pour vape juice in it? And you were like, no. Like, that would have been the better option. And all of a sudden, you were like... I think someone scre- yelled it out, or I can't remember how. Yeah. I knew it, but it was dip. When, when I when I figured out that it was what was it? What was it? Fucking wintergreen. It was some. It was a little garnish of uh, wintergreen. Um, Copenhagen. Stuff. Yeah, and also uh, when we launch Patreon, we'll make sure we throw those videos on there so you can watch this. The video of me preparing the salad for Ryan. It's fucking gross. Um, but you you ate the dip, uh, and you got like a crazy buzz on stage, and it. When you swallow dip, that that buzz does not go away. That shit lasts for like 15 minutes. It's a minutes. different type of buzz, too. It's, it's the very same type of buzz one. you get when you uh, do a nicotine gum. Oh, it's I awful. hate that type it's of buzz. Awful. It's awful. It's the worst. Gut. Yeah, it's all in your gut. And like in your throat, you feel your throat buzz. Your throat like, feels oh. tight. So I... Nothing's I, like the buzz of a cigarette, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we don't smoke no more. No, we so. don't. I, course, uh, but, you know. I took a jewel rip out at, at the Seattle show. A you fan did. said, took, do you want to rip on my jewel? Rips. And then in front of the crowd, I took a little jewel rip. I was drunk, though, so that will be my excuse. Um, but I have quit. Uh, however, I took a bite of the salad I made you, too, because I was like, it's only fair. I didn't swallow it, but just putting it in my mouth gave me a crazy buzz. And it was horrible. It's a horrible flavor. The salad dressing was the juice from maraschino cherries mixed with ranch dressing and... Uh, Ranch dressing powder and the gooey juice oh, from a, pure, a can of Purina dog chow uh, on some lettuce and tomatoes that I got off of a sub sandwich at a corner store. Um, There's some fruit snacks in there. There was a dip garnish and there was some other stuff. I don't remember, though. It was gross, though. There's some pepperoni from the sub sandwich. I put it down. You did. Like, for real. Bravo. I thought that you would not be able to even get past like, a little bit. one try and I put it down. I put down... I swallowed everything you gave me. You did. It was horrible, man. It was horrible. I gave you a jar of poutine in Canada. Yep. You and Finn Wolfhard cooked up on stage a delicious little jar of poutine for me. No video for that because that was done live on stage instead of yeah. a video. It was... I like making the videos, though. Yeah, I like making the videos, too. Um, but it's... Ugh. Yeah. Icky. I can still taste the salad if I think about it. Like, I could still exactly what, you know, it, t- it well, tasted like. I can like. taste another ad read. Me too. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission free. While other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees, so you can trade stocks and keep all your profits. 
Plus, there is no account minimum deposit needed to get started, so you can start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy to understand charts and market data, and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections, such as 100 most popular. With Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio, discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners of Super Megacast a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. Sign up at megacast.robinhood.com. That's megacast.robinhood.com. And Woo! That, uh, there we, here we are. Oh, that was quick. It's hot in here, dude. It is. It took like a 10-minute break. Cool it off. Sure. Come back and finish it. Of course. We just need about 20 more minutes. Yeah. Cool. <sighs> What up? We're back. Yep. Took a little break, let the room cool off, because heaven knows I'm miserable now. Yeah, the fan's still on right now. It's going to turn off soon. Give it a second, guys. If you can hear it, sincerest apologies. Um, Also, I want to update on something. A while back, I think it was in the Resident Evil uh, series or Kingdom Hearts series, we we talked about the Super Megaplex, uh, an office, a potential office we wanted to get for Super Mega. And I got to say... We like some of the designs you guys came up with, like the floor plans and shit. Like that, that would was be a that awesome. would be a dream. If like that was like if we could actually do that. If we had the money to build some of the designs you guys made, <laughs> like some of you guys came up with some crazy the fucking like perfect floor. offices. I was looking through some like people emailed us. I was looking on like Twitter and I was just like, oh my god, this is so cool. If only we could actually do this. Like there was like lounge areas and I think someone put like slides and shit in one, like a ball pit. And I was if like, if we were Fuck. ever to like have our office, I'd want to dedicate one place to be like a movie theater room. Okay, we could do that. If we had the money for it, it would but, be it would be a place where we could essentially make it the podcast recording room, but we would also have a projector screen and projector in there. Why not just make it with the Let's Play recording room? We could, and we could project it, like play everything on that projector. Fuck, dude, dude, I want to build an office, not build. I want to get an office because then we can like record uh, just a bunch of different stuff. Like if we want to watch a movie, we could record our reactions right afterwards and stuff like that. Yeah, that'd be pretty dope. Projectors are. Uh, I just like. I've just always wanted a fucking movie theater. I had we had one at at like the when we used to live with Marcus, but. I'm gonna live in Marcus Plier. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, Sayonara, we, we left and went to a, an apartment where that it, did not have a movie theater. Yeah. Which sucked. <laughs> we, we were, we were, we were, uh, in the hub though in Glendale, so. Yeah, we could walk to a movie theater, which was cool. But, like, there was, there was something cool about that. Like, that room we painted purple, we set up a projector, got a couch for it. That was a nice little room. It was. We, we put up, we had a shelf, put our, our amiibos and shit on them. Yep. You put your, your Funko Pop figures on that shelf too, right? Yeah, the Iron Giant ones. Every, all 50 of them. <laughs> Ryan, actually, guys, if you've watched male videos, he gets a lot of Iron Giant Pop figures. Don't be fooled. He keeps those. He has them all on a huge mantle in his house, like over the over the fireplace. I have a whole room dedicated to him. You walk in and it's just things people have sent in Iron Giant related. You can't <laughs> you can't even walk in honestly. Like you have to get a shovel to kind of like clear a path to, just to walk in. It's a lot of Iron Giant merchandise, and he loves it. People were saying that I look like an Iron Giant character apparently, and that's why you like me and you're friends with me. You, uh, if someone were to do. Like a uh, like I could be Hogarth. No, like grown up. No, but Ali, you, you look like a young a young Ted Mansley. A young Ted Mansley. Okay, I was hoping you would go for a uh, Dean, because he's <laughs> very handsome. Yeah, but I would fuck he, Dean. He's also a bit dusky, you know. Uh, yeah, but I don't you know. Definitely, like you look like of any character in that whole thing. Ted Mansley is oh. the one you look more like. So the ugliest one. Thanks, dude. He's not the ugliest one. Ryan, you look like the, the old, Iron the Giant himself. The guy in the beginning in the fucking boat's the ugliest one. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's pretty fucking ugly. I could he's see him when big, I shut my eyes. Yeah. He's, he's like... He's actually, I think, based off of the voice actor who voiced him. Oops. <laughs> but... He's probably dead. I don't know. Probably. Okay. I don't know. Does that make it right? It, it's oh, okay. They're dead. It's okay. <laughs> you, know. you can you can make fun of a You're dead You're not hurting man. their feelings. You're not. You're not. Just their loved ones who are trying to keep. What you the think? You think that dude's loved ones listen to Super Mega Cast? Yes. 
They really do. And it's like, what the fuck, guys? <laughs> I know. They sent us a letter. Dude, my Ted, dad. Ted Mansley is ugly as fuck, man. He's got a big nose. That's why you did it, isn't it? What? He's got a big <laughs> no! chin and a big nose. He just has the fucking hair and the, and the face shape. I think I look like a grown-up Hogarth. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, you don't. What the fuck, dude? Yes, I do. No, you don't. Everyone you says like I do. You look like a Ted Mansley. I don't look like a fucking Ted. My face is not that fucked up. Dude, you put, like, I think you look more like Ted Mansley than any age of Hogarth. I disagree. I dress like Hogarth too, with the like the red jacket. Doesn't matter if you dress like someone. I can dress like Shakira, but I ain't Shakira. Could be if you want. <laughs> no one's gonna. No one's gonna bat an eye thinking, "Is that shit?" No, that's just. Ryan. Yes, they would. <laughs> like, like, and your hips aren't lying. You definitely <laughs> could. I, uh, I don't know. Ali said I look like an Iron Giant character because there's like I have a very like sharp angular face and kind of. I was like, oh, and I have like cartoon. Per, like characteristics i'm long and lanky and i got like big features like big nose uh massive penis uh so it's very much like a cartoon character you color this guy pink and make like okay that's you. yeah i was i was okay i uh fucked up i was thinking of the the where's the giant man's no that's thinking of that guy no you know where's the giant he's not talking to himself Where's the giant Mansley? He's talking to Mansley. I know. I feel like a dumbass now. Okay. Yeah. I Sorry. Kinda... I got his name wrong. It's Kent Mansley. And you call yourself a fan. I, ne I never said I'm Ted a fan. Ted Mansley? <laughs> Ted Mansley. People are going to be like, oh, Ryan, you ain't a true fan, buddy. But so, you do look more like our boy. I do. I, our... Yeah. I look like him. Ryan, I'm, I'm afraid you're going to have to get that tattoo lasered off on your back. <laughs> Like you, you clearly have not earned that well, tattoo. Well, it's not a Kent Mansley tattoo. If it was, then I then then there'd be something to it's say. A, it's a it's a metal giant creature. You should get it. A like, giant metal man. Ah, uh, my leg is cramping up. Holy shit! My not the leg. My, ow! It's my fucking like right here. Your butt? No, my like hip muscle. What the fuck? Yeah, there it goes. Ah. How's that feel? Shit, dude. That you shit. stretch it out. Every Stop. time I move my leg, it's doing it. Why? Every time you do what to your leg? Relax I it? it this way. It's this muscle, right? What is that muscle? I don't know. Sometimes I get cramps in my feet. I, I'll be laying in bed at night. And also, my feet will do like this, where like the big yeah. toe will get further away from them. And I'll be like, ah, ah. And you can like see it. Like, and, like it'll start curling up and shit. And it's like, ah. I take pictures when that happens because it's disgusting. Do you ever like, I don't know if this happens to you. I'll be lying in bed and out of nowhere, my foot will just cramp up, like for like so fucking bad. <laughs> so do you guys know why that happens? Is it a vitamin deficiency? Am I not taking my vitamins enough? Like, is it is it dehydration? Why does my foot fucking just cramp up for no reason? Like, if I just get into a certain position, just boom, cramp. It sucks. How come when I pee, it red? That's uh, might be kidney stones. Could be <laughs> cancer. Well, I'm giving you real answers. You're just gonna say no. Nope, you're wrong. Nope. Yeah, you are. Try again, bucko. No, you're a lesbian. Uh, no, you are. You are. <laughs> I fucking love that shit. <laughs> no. Now you're a lesbian. No, you are. Mm. I'm gonna start saying that to like every girl I meet, just for no reason. Like, no, you're a lesbian. No. No, you are. I know. Every time like a joke fails, just call him a lesbian. I'm gonna be one of those stand-up comedians that goes to a like a stand-up night at an improv comedy place. And then none of my jokes land, so I get really mad at the audience. And then I get into a fight with members of the audience and get really insecure. I love those videos. Because, I mean, their back's literally up against a wall. And, and, and you're just they're... watching, like, the meltdown of the human, like, psyche. You're just watching, like, this is straight up, like, primitive human nature. He, he doesn't know what to do. He's cor cornered like a dog. He's not giving up. It's like, fuck you guys! Yo, you fat bitch! <laughs> yeah, I said it! Yeah, I fucked your mom! They just start getting mean with their insults when, like, usually they're like they're not funny and they're not like jokey funny ones. Because we, like, a trained comedian can take any moment, any heckling moment, and turn it around, right? Yeah, and like make the insults stick, but still like funny, where it's not just like Jesus it's not like, Christ. Fuck. I saw a video of a guy get up and he was heckling, and the comedian called him out, and then he went up and he tackled the comedian. Jesus. Yeah. Apparently, he was like a well-known heckler that always comes around. With his mom or some shit. I don't know. I don't know the full story. <laughs> don't make fun of him. He heckles all the time. He's, he's the regular heckler. <laughs> we love him. He keeps it lively. 
That's that uh, when the Batman starts doing stand up uh, comedy. Uh, when he changes his career, that's going to be his Batman. biggest. When the, the Batman. Batman starts doing stand up comedy, his biggest enemy will be the heckler. Things have changed since the Batman. Now he does stand up, and the heckler is his greatest foe. I just want to go to a stand up. Hear a knock knock joke. <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? <laughs> Orange? Orange who? Knock knock. Who's there? Orange? <laughs> he's just talking to himself. As he's, he's practicing his stand up in the he mirror. He gets caught in his own circular loop knock knock joke. And he can't stop it. And he's crying for help. You can just see it in his eyes. Uh, I'm going to just like go to a comedy show. What drugs do, folks. Yep, that's what they do. So I want to, like, I don't want to heckle. Like, you can heckle in a good way where it's just like, oh, that's good. <laughs> yes. Where it's, like, loud, obnoxious, getting in the comedian's, like, ears and... But it's like, he means, like, the guy means well. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. not trying to heckle. He's just enjoying it so much. And he's commenting on it. He's like, God, oh, that's funny. Then you have then you have the others that are just like, okay. Yeah, but it, it, the comedian will be like, so, uh, I was at the grocery store. Uh, me too. It's like, dude, dude, I was at, uh, uh, Vaughn's. Okay, cool, dude. You want to come up here and do the set? Probably better than you. Then everyone goes, oh, and the comedian has to go, whoa, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, I can't handle this, come on, come on. Or, if you're Kramer, you can take a different route. He's up! A-